Every programmer at some point in their life is going to have an error in their code no matter how skilled they are or what programming language they use, so it's important to understand what these errors mean and how you can try and prevent them or fix them. In Python we can split these types of errors up into three different types, the first one being syntax errors, the second being runtime exceptions, and the third being logic errors or logical errors. When it comes to syntax errors, essentially what this means is that your code is written incorrectly and it cannot be parsed by the interpreter. Essentially this could mean that you've misspelled a function name, a variable name, perhaps you've indented too far or too less, you're missing a colon, something along those lines that just does not allow the program to even run because there's just something wrong with the syntax of the code. For example, if I use the print function here to make a um, you know message, so we have a normal print function, so like uh, this is a message, but then um, let's just say on accident we add like two T's. Um, obviously I'm in VS Code here, so you'll see that it runs, or it has like a red line here. Um, but we'll just say for the sake of this, maybe we're using Vim and we can't exactly tell right off the bat. Let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see that it says um, right here, so it says traceback, and then the file that it is in, the line to, and then the line that the code is, and then down here it says name error. So a name error is a type of syntax error, and this says that the name print with two T's is not defined. So you'll see that it says line two. So usually what you can do is you can control click, depending on your operating system, I'm on Windows, control click on this file here and then when you click on it it'll take you directly to that line that the error is on so for example I could have two spaces in here run it again and then you'll see it's on line four and I'll make sure that my cursor is up to line one so you see it up here on the comment I'll hold control click it and it'll bring me right down to the error and then usually you can figure out where it is from there a few more examples like I mentioned before is referencing a variable uh, maybe I'll say like um, I don't know, num1 equals 2, and then I will uh, correctly call print this time, but this time I will try and print num2. Um, just say that, you know, maybe I got confused a little bit, and I will run this, and you'll see I get the same name error and says num2 is not defined. So, you know, that's just how you can quickly. Uh, you know, understand when you're using the wrong function call or, you know, a different name for a variable, something along those lines. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you may have remembered that at one point I got an indentation error, and this is a type of syntax error. So, for example, if I keep my num1 variable and set that equal to 2, and then I have an if statement here that says if num1 is equal to 2, which that returns a true, but say I don't indent, or maybe I do two spaces or I'll just keep it at um, you know no indentation and then I try and print something I'll just say uh, true here so now let's run this and you'll see now I get an indentation error it says expected an indented block if I follow this error here it'll bring me to the beginning of the line and then I can see here that because I have a colon I actually have to tab this in because it's considered to be part of the code block inside of the if statement Likewise, if I remove the colon and then I uh, you know, run the code, let's see what happens. So you'll see this is just flat out a syntax error, invalid syntax. What this is trying to say is essentially, um, and the interpreter knows that whenever there's an if statement, you need to have a colon, it just says um, essentially there's just an error in your code and I don't really know what's going on. So if we go to that line, I can see, oh, I forgot to put a colon after my if statement and then you'll see once I go ahead and add that in the syntax is considered correct and that is all fine. Those are just a few examples of syntax errors. The main idea is that they're going to prevent your code from even being interpreted because it won't be able to parse the code because the syntax is incorrect. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second category here, runtime exceptions. Unlike syntax errors, when you have a syntax error, it won't even allow the code to be executed, but with runtime exceptions, the code will be executed until it interprets a line of the code that causes an error and crashes the program. 
If you've ever used a basic calculator and you've tried to divide by zero, that's basically a good example of what a runtime exception is because you'll notice that when you have it on your calculator, it'll say like a divide by zero rule error or something along those lines and won't even allow you to get the result of that problem. So if we try and emulate that in Python, that's actually really easy. We can make a very basic calculator here. So say that I have num1 and I set that equal to the, uh, we'll just say the int of the input, enter number one. And then I'll go ahead and copy this line. And then I'll just change all the ones to twos here. So now I have uh, our first number and our second number. And then I wanna say like result equals num1 divided by num2. And then I just print the result, right? So you'll see right off the bat there are no syntax errors and indeed my syntax is 100% correct. But let's go ahead and run this. And this is just from the previous one, but if I go ahead and enter maybe 10, but then say number two, I enter zero, you'll see that a runtime exception was thrown and this one is a zero division error, division by zero. So essentially what happened here was there was nothing wrong with this line syntactically, same with this line, but as soon as I tried to divide the first number by zero, the program realized that it couldn't do that and it threw a zero division error and crashed the program before anything else could have even happened. So I can have however many lines down here that I want. I could have like, uh, you know, line one and then just paste this or just change this to line, I guess. Just copy this, paste this however many times I want and then run it and you'll see that even if I do, you know, 10 and then zero, nothing gets ran after it because as soon as it hits this line and tries to divide by zero, it crashes the program and nothing else is executed. There are ways of catching these exceptions though and we will be going over that later on in the series. Obviously, as a beginner right now, you could do that with an if statement, essentially saying, you know, if num2 is equal to zero, then have them re-put it in. But like I said, there is a way to actually catch these exceptions and we will be going over that later on. Finally, the last group of errors that we're gonna be taking a look at are logic errors. You might also hear them be called logical errors. These are the hardest to catch and that is for the reason that they will not crash the program and they don't prevent the program from being run. So unlike syntax errors where those won't even allow the program to be executed and runtime exceptions, where the program crashes if it hits a certain line, logic errors are entirely based on your code not giving you the result that you intended to give. For example, let's find the average of two numbers. So if I have a uh, input from a user, and I'll do the same num1, num2, enter number one, and then I'll just copy this line here change all the ones to twos. But for here, nothing is going to cause any runtime exceptions and there will be no syntax errors and we'll see what the issue is here in this code. So if I wanna get the average, I'll make a variable called avg and I'll do num1 plus num2 and then I'll divide that by two because that's how many there are in here. Then we'll go ahead and print the average. So let's go ahead and run this and we will just do um, two and two and you'll notice that the average returns a three. Go ahead and take a look at this line here and see if you can figure out what the answer is. So if you said that our order of operations was wrong, you would be correct. And that is because, well, division comes before addition. So it was dividing num two by two and then adding that to num one. When in reality to find the average of a few numbers, in this case two, you add all of the numbers together and then divide by the amount of numbers that there are. So now if we run this again and we do two and two, you'll see that it returns a two. This is a very basic example of what a logic error is, but this should give you a few ideas as to why these are the hardest errors to find and fix in your code, especially because your IDEs won't actually tell you if you have a logic error or not. The best way to try and find these is to essentially, like I did here, I abuse parentheses in my code when I'm doing any mathematical calculations. But you could also use a debugger and step through your code to see what each line and each value of variable returns. 
So now you have the very basic idea of what errors are in Python and just enough knowledge to really get out there and understand how to either prevent these or fix these errors or bugs in your code. Like I mentioned before, we will be going over exceptions more specifically later on in the series when we have an entire video dedicated to catching these exceptions and preventing our code from crashing when we encounter them in our code. In the next video, we are going to dive deeper into strings and understand the functions that we can use with them and just get a little bit deeper into the idea of what strings are.